Hello everybody, my name's Barb and I'm the Trollbridge Vlogger. Today we're going to have a view of my ARCs. This is a book haul of all the ARCs I've received recently. The ones I've read, the ones I'm reading, and the ones I have to read. But first, I'm going to tell you about this book here. The Ice Dragon. This is the book that one of my reading students is reading and when he gets done, his name's Jalen, he's eight I believe, he gets this. It's the cover to hang on his wall. So he's got this beautiful dragon. That was beautiful. And my granddaughter Alyssa, that he is reading with her. Um, I thought that would be less intimidating and more fun for him. Since she's only 11, but she's a really excellent reader and pretty good teacher. Okay. For the first book I read, really good. I gave it five stars. I loved it. Singapore Sapphire. And I'll just read you the back. It says, Early 20th century Singapore is a place where a person can disappear. And Harriet Gordon hopes to make a new life for herself there, leaving her tragic memories behind her. But murder gets in the way. Singapore, 1910. Desperate for a fresh start, Harriet Gordon finds herself living with her brother, the reverend and headmaster of a school for boys. In Singapore at the height of colonial rule, hoping to gain some financial independence, she advertises her services as a personal secretary. It is unfortunate that she should discover her first client, Sir Oswald Newbold, an explorer, mine magnet, and president of the exclusive Explorers and Geographers Club, dead with a knife in his throat. When Inspector Robert Curran is put on the case, he realizes that he has an unusual witness in Harriet. Harriet's keen eye for detail and strong sense of duty interests him, as does her distrust of the police and her traumatic past, which she is at pains to keep secret from the gossips of Singapore society. When another body is dragged from the canal, Harriet feels compelled to help with the case. She and Karen are, all, are soon drawn into a murderous web of treachery and deceit and find themselves face to face with a ruthless cabal that no qualms about killing against, again, to protect its secrets. Okay, this book. This was really good. Harriet's a really good character. So is Karen. Um, several people die. I'm not going to say who all, but they're all intertwined. Uh, they think that the per first person to die, Sir Oswald, that he's the head of everything, but they find out later that he's just the dupe for the mastermind. Um, I found this totally different. Um, The bad guys, some of them are really bad, some of them are like just being used by other people, they're the dupes, and there's several of those, and then there's the mastermind, and this person is someone you wouldn't really expect, but I kind of had person pegged a long way. But it has a lot of surprises, it has a lot of action, 
very good book altogether, and I loved it. I would, there's going to be a whole series of them. I'd love to have them all. Next, the next book I read was this one. I just put up the review for it tonight on Goodreads, and I had a hard time deciding how to rate it because it's thick in history and as a an educational tool this is a five star book however it wasn't engaging in the beginning it was five chapters of very thick history of these two men that are friends and become well one kills the other over his wife and that's the main premise of the story but there were some good chapters on other things like there was a chapter in here about Morse code and how that and the telegraph uh, changed the news world and the publishing world all the way around uh, magazines and newspapers started popping up everywhere because it was easier to get the news I gave it four stars. I tossed it between three and a half to four stars because of the way the execution of the layout was. I really did not like that. You don't really get to the real story until chapter six and it still occasionally goes off track and it talks about a lot of the gossip and but all in all it's a good story. It's accurate there are a lot of resources in the back of it beautiful cover so I gave it four stars uh, I liked it I, I didn't love it uh, I would not read it again okay next the metal of purity the metal of purity came to me from the United Kingdom from the author, B.P. Smythe Barry. Uh, I've read one of his books before. I loved it. Uh, this one is not exactly in my favorite era because it's World War II Germany and I really, I read a lot of that back in school, back for history. But this guy's a great storyteller so I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to surprise me, and I'm going to love it. Next, it's not a review book, a book I'm reading, Winter by Marissa Meyer. I've read the other three, well, the first three. I have two to go after this, the, the two little companion books, which are Stars Above and Barest. Winter starts out really good. Lavana, the queen, um, who is like a usurper. Um, she's pretty evil. That shows in the first two chapters of this, even more than in the other books. Uh, I think this is going to be more centered around her with Winter and the conclusion of. Cinder, Scarlet, and Cress. I'm really enjoying this. I love these books. Next, I'm reading this. I'm only like five pages in. I already know I love this. I, I, there's like five other books in this series. I plan on getting them all. When I first got it, I thought it was just going to be a religious book, but it's not. And <coughs> it's somewhat of a historical family saga with religious overtones, but it seems like it's going to be really good. And next, I have two romance novels. This one I just received. Barefoot Beach by Debbie Mason. Never read this author before, I don't think. 
Wedding fever has taken over Harmony Harbor this summer, and the local matchmakers have set their sights on Thea Lawson, a former Navy pilot who's in town for a stay at Greystone Manor. And while Thea's got her reasons to put the small town behind her as fast as she can, there's a certain tall, dark, and irresistible man that she can't seem to get off her mind. Firefighter Marco De Rossi wants to beat the matchmakers at their own game, so he conspires with Thea to pretend they're already falling in love. It's only for the summer what could ever go wrong. But as the beach season draws to a close, Marco and Thea find their pretend relationship has led to a very real attraction. But when a secret from the past is revealed, jeopardizing everything they hold dear, can the unlikely couple find their way to happily ever after? This will be one of those days that I just want a little right, light reading, because this is a very light summary romance. So I won't be reading this for a while. And there's this one, Once Upon a Bad Boy. Um, this one comes out June 2019. Um, all of these, as far as the arts are concerned, are not out except King of Kings, I think, and maybe another one along the way. But this is a adult adult romance. Uh, I really don't want to read much about it. I I don't care if they're adult romance or regular romance. They're to me they're just whenever I'm bored and I've got nothing else to do. That's when I read romance. I mean, unless it's got a really great backstory. Next, this one's out, but the sequel is getting ready to come out. I think it's called Rage. I'm not exactly sure, but um, I know a lot of booktubers have read this. I don't know if it's good or not. I don't know when I read it, but it's a... Fantasy Legend says that Aurora Paven's ancestors first gained their magic by facing a storm and stealing part of its essence. Aurora has been groomed to be the perfect queen, but she's yet to show any trace of magic she'll need to protect her people. To keep her secret and save her crown, she'll have to marry a dark and brooding storming prince from another kingdom. He'll guarantee her spot as the next queen and be champion her people need to remain safe but the most but the more Aurora uncovers about him the more future with him frightens her when a handsome young storm hunter reveals he was born without magic but possesses it now Aurora realizes there's a third option for her future besides ruin of marriage she might not have to, the magic now but she can steal it if she's brave enough a rich and unforgettable fantasy forged from the power of storms, the danger of secrets, and the magic of Cora Carmack's imagination. That was by Camp Garcia. That was her review. It looks good to me. My daughter wants to read it already, so it's probably going to be pretty good. I don't know if I'll go on with the series until I read it. Okay, now we have Death Comes by Drone by Tony Berry. All I know about this is that it is somewhat of a thriller. So it says, and it doesn't say when it comes out, nowhere on the book. Most of these books come out in June or July. Um, except Singapore Sapphire doesn't come out to August. 
old clothes never fade away. Just when he felt he was safe, scars of the past are reopened. An ex-con finds a young man's body dumped in a skip outside his lockup. A slick wheeler dealer is bashed and stripped in the seafront changing room. Standover men force an elderly Greek couple to dance on broken glass. Three seemingly unrelated events face disgraced agent and reluctant sleuth Bromo Perkins when he responds to a mysterious message from his undercover masters. He is coerced into becoming part of a team led by former collegian and lover Delia Dunstan and burly ex-cop Grant Mayfield. Only when a murky trail of threats and murder starts to unravel does he discover he is being used as bait for their investigation into the emergence in Australian, Australia of Bulgarian Mafia connections. He has no choice but to face the deadly dangers ahead. Sounds pretty good. It's got some Mafia in it. And I can get into some Godfather stuff. Okay. These other two books I've had for a while. But I read them as I want. This one comes out the 19th of June. One minute later. I think it's somewhat of a mystery. I'm going to read it all. It's got a huge thing on the back of it. And last but not least is the last collection about Chanel, Coco Chanel and, and uh, Elsa Schiaparelli. It's historical fiction. I really wish it was a true memoir of these ladies or a true story about these two ladies, but you never know what of it is true, what's f based on back, fact and what's fiction. It's about real people, but it's supposed to be fiction. Um, I read that there is a rivalry between the two ladies in this book. And I can get into some cat fights, so, okay. That sounds pretty cool. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you like the video, click like. If you want to subscribe, buttons below. I will put as much information as I can in the bottom box. Um, I'm not really good at this. I don't know how to edit. Uh, I appreciate every person that watches me. Uh, I'd like to invite you all to follow me on Twitter at goodreads.com. I'm the Trollbridge Blogger, uh, Barbara Centenny. My, my channel here is just under my name, Barbara Centenny, so you don't have to put in anything other than my name and you should be able to find me. Uh, I hope to be making more videos more often. I'm not used to talking to the camera. I guess I'll get used to it. But thank you all for watching. Have a blessed day. Bye.